Hello everyone, and welcome to this tutorial on how to get the most out of your Metromatic and Dystopiomatic Modern City Map tile sets from Brass Badger Workshop and the Roll20 Marketplace. My name is Badger, and I'll be walking you through some tips and tricks to take your tabletop from a bag of tiles to a finished map layout in just a few minutes. When we're finished setting up the map, we should have something that looks a little bit like this. This is a map I set up a little earlier this morning, using pieces from the Metromatic Pack and the Building Pack 1, and it's pretty much ready to go for my game tonight. So, a little earlier today, I already set up my blank page, and made sure that everything is set to happen on the map and background layer, because there's going to be quite a few sprites on this page when we're done, so we definitely want to make sure we're using Roll20's Layers feature. And I'm just going to open up my Marketplace tab, and these are from my library instead of my purchases, just because I uploaded them directly from my own computer. If you buy these on the Marketplace, they will be under the Your Purchases tab. Now, I usually like to start with a pretty decent napkin sketch, at least, if not a uh, pretty good idea of what I'm going to be inflicting on my players. But for the purposes of this, I'm just going to be putting it together as if my wonderful, beloved players just decided that they were going to go off script and do something crazy, and I'm trying to make a game while they're all on bathroom break. That is definitely something that happens to me. So I am just kind of laying out a road as if, let's assume that my players today are going to try to rob a bank. So I'm just going to put together kind of a, a city block around the bank that they're going to rob in a few clicks because I know that they're going to be asking me about how tall it is, what's across the street from it, and now I can kind of put something together that'll let them know. So I'm just grabbing pieces from the Roll20 Marketplace tab and I don't know why, but occasionally when you upload stuff directly from your own machine, it tends to lose the size of the pieces that you upload. So one of the things I built into the set to make that easier in case it happens is they all have a handy feature where they all have the name and the size written down. So if it's going to be 40 feet by 40 feet, it'll say 40 feet by 40 feet, or if it's 25 feet by 20 feet, that's all written in there. And right now I'm just copying and pasting some streets so that there we go I've got roads so that'll work pretty nicely I'm pretty pleased with that so now I want to grab some curbs so that I can add in my sidewalks here because you can't just have a sidewalk that abuts straight to a road that would create flooding and just be crazy and it's gonna be a little bit easier for your players to see what's going on if you have a clear delineation between different areas of your map. That's one of the things that I tried to do with these map sets is make sure that everything is designed in such a way so that you can tell at a very great distance how big things are and what things are. So I hope that works out and I hope you guys like them. So let's see, we'll put that right there and let's grab a copy of curb corner one more time and we've got our corners and we'll take another one of those and put it right down here there we go it's all behaving so let's copy the finish copying the curbs spin one of the nice features of roll 20 is that everything snaps very well to their grid you don't have every anything hovering by half a pixel, or you can't accidentally turn it at a 90.6 degree angle. So, again, I'm just copying and pasting as I go. So that's how you can use the Metromatic Tile Pack and the Roll20 interface to create a city block in about as much time as it takes your players to get a drink and go to the bathroom. 
it's pretty easy and I think it has a very robust pack that lets you create a lot of different settings in not a lot of time. It also plugs in very well with the Building and City Extra packs and works really well with the Dystopiomatic packs, so you can go from a destroyed city to a normal one or vice versa. Dystopiomatic streets are much grungier than this and they work great for your Shadowrun or World of Darkness games where you need a city but one that's been destroyed by sadness and crime and evil. So that's all I've got for this month, but check back in a few weeks for another tutorial on how to get the most out of the art from Brass Badger. And thank you so much for watching, and thank you so much for supporting the workshop. I could not do this without all of the people that are wonderful enough to buy the packs I have up on the marketplace. I really, really appreciate it. Until next time, if you want to get in touch with me, you can email brassbadgerworkshop at gmail.com, or I'm on Twitter at brassbadger. I love hearing from you guys, so feel free to contact me with any requests, feedback, or ideas for some crazy dungeon. See you next time.